Hello everybody, welcome to All Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Josh, my friend, do you remember Anthem? Barely, man. Like, <laughs> kind of? I, I couldn't tell yet. Unless, well, I, I could tell you because I looked it up before I did this video, but mm -hmm. if you asked me this morning, I wouldn't have been able to tell you when it actually came out. Like, it no. might have been a year ago, it might have been two years ago, it might have been this year for all I knew. It feels weird. like it's, it's kind of just, just in the background. Yeah, it like occupies a strange space in the gaming industry where it's kind of like, it's like Schrodinger's cat, isn't it? Is it alive? Is it dead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Schroeder, yeah, Schrodinger's potential uh, looter shooter. But yeah, so uh, Bioware brought uh, blah, 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 Bioware mentioned back in February that they were going to be doing this Anthem 2.0 overhaul, um, which we just sort of went, why? Why would you do that? What's the point? Just do something else. Um, but they're definitely committed to it, and they've brought in this guy called Christian Daly, who uh, used to work for a different wing of Bioware. Um, but the thing is, Mr. Daly, his, the last game that he sort of spearheaded uh, was 2010's The Last Airbender, which didn't do that well. Um, I'm not, I'm not, Whoa. You know, I'm not on the go. That's a, that's a, it's a bold strategy, that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was the movie that has 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. He did the um, help design the, the game adaptation of that. Um, so he's the guy that's in charge of the new team inside Bioware, and they've updated their uh, blog saying, just sort of discussing the general status of Anthem and how they're overhauling it. But, and the thing is to point out, obviously, we're joking about the last thing that he was the designer on and things like that. Total massive props to the guy for leading a team and trying to resurrect something like Anthem. Yeah. I think it has an insane amount of negativity around it. Obviously, it was this giant, I was going to say disappointing, but I don't think people were ever that psyched for it anyway. It's just in a weird state where I would say the combat is phenomenal in it and nearly everything else is pretty subpar. So there is something to save if you have like a good idea for it. But a lot of the comments in this blog update are just surprising. Um, he mentions that uh, the team that, that's now working on Anthem is uh, around 30 um, because after launch, uh, everyone else, all the actual lead people, moved on to work on Dragon Age 4. So mm -hmm. um, they now only have a team of 30 people inside Anthem, uh, in, inside Bioware. Um, and they said that that's the incubation team has kicked, uh, that that's kicked off. Um, and basically he just says that they're starting to validate their design hypotheses, um, experimenting and prototyping to improve on the areas where we believe we fell short and to leverage everything that you love currently about Anthem. Um, I mean, we said before we kind of forgot that Anthem even existed, but I, I mean, I've got more stuff to talk about, but I guess what do you think of them just, just kind of doing this whole back to the drawing board type thing in 2020? Look, I think we're like every every few months we get a new update on them, you know, trying to retool this game. And I do agree mm. with you. I do think it's like it's worthy of commendation that you know you've got someone who is leading a team of thirty that trying to right the ship on a game that burned a lot of people. Like that in itself isn't a bad thing. That's a really good thing because you're trying mm. to justify the price that people paid, you know, back at launch or whether they've got it on sale and stuff like that. I do think it's um it's quite a noble attempt to make something of Anthem, because like you said, the bones are there. My only mm -hmm. issue is, is that it's just, for me, it's far too late. Like, it's a great yeah. idea. If this was kicking off this time last year, then that would have been like perfect, you know what I mean? If this was happening last summer or last fall, um, and they were getting into the incubation stage of a proper Anthem 2.0, I might mm -hmm. have been more here for it, but now over a year outside of release, like, I don't know who's going to be persuaded to come back. Like, I don't know the player base. I don't know who's actually actively <clears throat> invested in Anthem. And I wonder whether or not it's just, it might have been better to do an Anthem 2, but then you talk about the size of the team. If there's only 30 people working on it, you have to assume that the rest of Bioware is busy with other projects not working mm -hmm. on the direct sequel. And maybe that's why they can't do it. So they're trying to make the most of what they got. But did you, did you say that he's from um, Bioware Austin? Yeah, he was initially from Bioware Austin um, and worked on a bunch of other games before then, like Overwatch and, like I said, Last Airbender. But um, yeah. yeah, and, and he was, I think he was initially part of um, one of the Mass Effect teams or something and came across. Um, right. But yeah. That's really interesting because I remember in the, I think it was the Jason Schreier report on how Anthem went wrong. Um, mm. There was a little um, tidbit in that article or, you know, another big blowout on the game where it was saying that, you know, the Edmonton team who actually built the title had moved on to Dragon Age 4. And right. essentially people from uh, Bioware Austin had to be called in to kind of like salvage the mess. But I mm -hmm. think he mentioned that there was like disgruntlement in the team because essentially they've, they've got to come in and kind of like save this game that <laughs> they're not the really responsible for. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a thankless job because there's people like us who will sit and kind of like, perhaps rightfully so, take the piss out the whole game but it sucks <laughs> that the people who are working on it or the people who are leading it aren't the people who actually made the game they're just trying to mm -hmm. make something of what's there and i do think that is noble whether or not it's yeah. for me probably not you know what i mean it's way too oh, late for me to ever return to it 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, like, with that Kotaku report, they outlined that the initial design doc for Anthem was not even remotely what it ended up as. They sort of yeah. started out with this almost dark Soulsian thing where it was more brutal and it was more about specific, like, I think specific combat encounters, but you were delving out into this world to get certain items and loot and then come back. And it, over time, it became this thing with this flight mechanic that was taken out and put back in and whatever. Um, he does mention uh, in regards to the team size that um, having a smaller team um, gives them an agility that a larger team can't afford, um, which I guess means that they can implement stuff and take it out again, which I like the idea of that. Um, the thing is with this, um, his overall point um, is that he wants to have something that is, he says he wants to have something that is open and honest. Um, and it just says that it's going to be a very long process. You're going to see things that are on the cutting, that, you know, you're going to see things that end up on the cutting room floor. It just, it sounds like an early access thing. It kind of sounds like a Kickstarter project. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I guess that that is maybe one of the only things you can do now. But at the same time, People have already spent a hell of a lot of money on Anthem. It's, it was a full price game. It was a full premium thing. You know, we had E3 reveals and trailers and, you know, developer interviews and whatever else. It's, I don't know, I, I can't, if I, because I, we had copies of Anthem, we were giving them for review. Um, and at the same time, I, if I'd paid money for Anthem, like hearing all this stuff, I can't, I'd be interested to see in the comments whether people are, you know, pleased with this or whether it's just like like too little too late or whether it even feels insulting that you're overhauling yeah. so much after taking the money it's just you've kind of the anthem player base player base has kind of been like an unwitting backer of a project yeah. that isn't even you know together yet uh-huh and that's why i kind of feel bad for the the current team because the the main mm. problem at launch not only you know you know, ignoring the actual game itself, but it was the lack of communication from the team. Like, they mm -hmm. obviously clearly didn't know what to do. They were in kind of crisis mode because this game wasn't the hit they were expecting because there were way more problems that people were getting vocal about than they weren't anticipating. So, like, the roadmap, for instance, that more or less went to the bins straight away. That was written <laughs> off. And then yeah. we didn't have any idea what was actually happening with the updates as the, as the months went on. Like, it was so quiet, and yeah. the drip feed of information that we did get was so insubstantial that now I do think it's a it's a great idea that they're going to be more um, open about the development and kind of be more honest about it. It's kind of what um, Battlefront 2's developers did when they were rebuilding mm. their game after a rocky first six months or something. They were quite open. They were quite um, uh, I don't know. They, they were opening dialogue on kind of like forums and Twitter and stuff, trying to figure mm. out like the best way to shape that game. And they kept in touch with the community to let them know when updates were coming, what the updates were going to be, and stuff like that. So I do think probably this team is looking towards that for pointers. But again you can't escape the history that's been attached to it. This has come after a year of kind of a fractured relationship with the fans where they have been mm -hmm. quiet, where they have been throwing things, so they haven't haven't been committing to any long-term goals. And even now they're kind of just saying, oh yeah, we're, we're in Let's the incubation the period. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do an Anthem 2.0 at some point. But this is what they were saying, <laughs> like you said, in February, that was the plan mm -hmm. then. And I know it takes a lot of time to implement it, but how long... Like, I, who's, who's this for? Is it for the people who are already playing Anthem and are patiently mm -hmm. waiting for more content? Or is it for people like us who haven't played since launch and might be interested in getting back into it in the future so they do have the luxury of more time? I know. I, I think, like, for me, it would just they should just do a new IP. I think at some point, because of the amount of conversations that were going on around Anthem as, you know, even before launch, it was like, this thing doesn't seem like it's coming together. It feels like they're just going to abandon it. EA's reputation is that they abandon everything. Um, Battlefront 2 does stand out as something that they allowed the team to continue working on. But I would still say that Battlefront 2, even at launch, still had plenty to play. It's just that it had that horrible microtransaction storefront system that as soon as they got rid of, you know, you could actually enjoy what was there. Whereas in Anthem, there's so little there and they've added a couple of extra raids but you're still rerunning the same stuff over and over again you know the story i don't think the story had any more expansions and it ends on a cliffhanger anyway um something like no man's sky is another example of something that really clawed its way back after a disastrous launch but in anthem's case there's just no conversation around it or hype or even a want for it to come back um it's something pretty, i looked into oh, sorry i'll go on no, no, no. I was going to say, it's funny you mentioned No Man's Sky, right? Because that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that throws the spanner in the works for me. Because I wonder when it comes to Anthem, like we've been saying, how long people will care for. It's been a year, mm -hmm. like if they take another six months or whatever to make Anthem 2.0, will people care? But I think Hello Games and No Man's Sky prove that you can have a game that transforms radically years mm -hmm. after, after launch. You know what I mean? I know that game has pr <clears throat> probably more frequent updates than this did, but the game more, keeps yeah. changing now. Like we're what, five years on from No Man's Sky? Four years on, something like that? Four. In it keeps updating and people are continuing to care about it and it's getting in new players so perhaps they're looking at a game like that 
as a kind mm. of roadmap and as a basis for potential success rather than, I don't know, like something that had a shorter turnaround like Destiny, you know, that, that had problems at launch, but it was much faster out the gate to get things solved and get expansions out than Anthem was. So there is, mm -hmm. for me, still hope that they could do something and there is a precedent for it, but I wonder whether that's an anomaly or whether that's a one-off or whether that's because people were invested in what No Man's Sky could be. And I don't know whether that's yeah. the same for Anthem, like you said. Oh yeah, <clears throat> my thing with No Man's Sky is that it was always a phenomenal idea. It's just that it didn't it didn't hit it at launch. I would say that it did, but I, I obviously get why people didn't like it. That game was so mismarketed. There's you know there's a whole separate conversation as to what happened with No Man's Sky, but at least there was something there in terms of a you know open galaxy exploration game that you could get lost in. There was something innovative and quite unique to it as well in terms of the planet procedure, uh, procedurally generated planet stuff. Anthem feels like this kind of cold sterile copy of Destiny, which like you said in itself was something that took multiple iterations to nail down like a decent you know communal feel and constant rollouts of content and whatever and that game played immaculately well to boot so i don't know anthem has this insanely steep hill to climb and um, i did look into uh, game stats for it and um, there's a website called gamstat and um, that monitors uh, when a player base when a different game uh, when people achieve trophies and when new people log on and um, so based off that um, gamstat reckons that there's 85,000 monthly users based on trophy data and new users starting the game however um, i then went and looked on Twitch data over time, um, and Twitch's numbers, uh, they spiked back at launch back in uh, February of 2019, yeah, 2019, um, there was also some spikes in January when the uh, trailers and gameplay and stuff came out, um, around about um, 50 to 1,000 views, you know, across multiple channels back then, those numbers have, f <laughs> have fallen pretty drastically um, to less than 100 uh, for the rest of the year, and the rest of 2019, and to this day, um, so that sort of, for me, that proves that you know, my hypothesis with this is that people are, are picking up Anthem on sale because it, you know, it fell down to like five pounds or whatever on some of the PlayStation sales and um, just to see what the big deal is. Maybe they're trying, you know, trying the game out, getting a couple of trophies, but they're not sticking with it. There's not a overall, you know, interested community in this that's diving into, you know, there's not any um, dedicated Twitch streamers that are attracting, you know, audiences of hundreds or thousands or anything like that. It feels yeah. like Anthem is just this curio that's sort of just hung around for long enough where people will check it out for a few, a few notes, but that's about it. It. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I don't even know how the hell, like at some point EA must think that's valuable or can be valuable eventually, but paired with how long the development cycle feels like it's going to be, I guess, yeah. do you even see this like, working at all? <laughs> Well, I like no, but I can see why EA <laughs> might think it would work because, like you said, there's still eighty thousand players logging in every month or something, mm. and we've we've seen the financial reports from the likes of Ubisoft and Activision this year, which is a whole other video. But we see how much people spend on microtransactions. I think mm. Ubisoft made about eight hundred million dollars in the past year just off um, their in-game microtransactions and their titles. So right. he is probably looking at the potential for those microtransactions to sell in Anthem at, against the cost of making a new game. You know, you've either got mm -hmm. 30 people working on Anthem 2.0 and retooling it and potentially making a profit through in-game purchases with that, or you've got the prospect of a 400-person team spending four years or three years or even two years making Anthem 2 proper, and I'm mm -hmm. sure they're weighing up the costs going, which one would we, would we, would we rather invest in at this point? And I do think it makes more sense to do um, the, uh, the Anthem 2.0 that they're mm -hmm. doing, but whether or not, again, it comes back to the point of I don't know who these 80,000 people are who are logging on every month. I don't know anyone who's talking about Anthem. Like you said, no one's nope. watching on Twitch and that's not the be all and end all, but no. like, I hope there are some people like out there enjoying it, but I don't know anyone who is out there enjoying it. <laughs> I know. I think, I mean, I, I I guess in terms of a business model that would work, yeah, you take a very small team. They already have a lot of the assets in terms of, you know, um, enemy character models and the different javelins, like the mech suits and stuff. Um, and you could do a free-to-play model that maybe subsists on cosmetic microtransactions and you just put it out there and you say, hey, look, try Anthem. You know, there's maybe enough of like a pop culture cachet with that name that you could sort of dive in and check it out. And if it's free-to-play and it plays well enough that it might hook some people back in. It just, it feels insane right now. Um, I'm just <laughs> super curious what people think of it um so yeah let's read it down in the comments below did you pick up anthem at the time how have you found it over the course of 2019 and what do you think about the idea of them doing a full-on kickstarter style overhaul for now i've been scott from whatculture.com i've been josh from whatculture.com i'll catch you next time bye bye